It's me, the bird, Michael Fertico, once again, and I've got something special for you this time. We're taking a deep dive on a player who's won the single most prestigious contest in the world multiple times. That's right, I'm talking about that one. California States. Gentry Stein has been one of the most well-known, influential, and decorated players in the scene for close to a decade now. I've heard him called the highest paid athlete of yo-yo, and that's a well-earned title with multiple world and national championships to his name. He's a player who commands attention. When he changes up his style, the whole metagame has to respond. Few players have ever put in the same kind of work he does, especially toward routine construction, stage presence, and choreography. The mark he's made on the scene cannot be ignored. If you're talking about the greatest 1A players of all time, Gentry's name needs to be included in that conversation. So today, we are counting down the five greatest Gentry Stein freestyles of all time. So let's get to it. Number five, Worlds 2011. The stage at the World Yo-Yo Championship is always daunting, and that only gets worse as you make it into the later rounds of competition. So for Gentry to even make it to finals, let alone hit the stage this hard the first time he ever even attended Worlds, is frankly astonishing. This is a special routine to me personally because I actually lost interest in yo-yoing between around 2009 and 2011, and happening to catch the live stream of Worlds 2011 is what got me back into it. The fact that some kid I'd never heard of before put on such a show and took home third place is what inspired me to be a competitor. So I'd say there's almost no chance that my YouTube channel would even exist without this routine. And almost 10 years on, there's still so much to like about this performance. While the metagame has shifted tremendously in that time, Gentry's strong aesthetic sense means the trick set here is still really well textured and visually appealing. While the material isn't as refined as his later freestyles, that lends a real rawness to this one. There's a palpable, overflowing energy to everything. You can feel Gentry's excitement, how hungry he is, and it's hard not to get caught up in those emotions. The pace of this freestyle is just non-stop, and it's almost exhausting to watch, but despite that, there are still a lot of really subtle bits of choreography and execution here that take things to the next level. This is THE routine that put Gentry on the map as the guy to watch, and honestly, how could it not? Number 4. California States 2012. The year is 2012, the judging system just changed to weight performance more heavily, and all eyes are on Gentry, the kid who blew up in 2011 and was already known for presentation and choreography. And where Worlds 2011 is beautiful in how visually dense, busy, and intense it is, Gentry's first freestyle in the new system is iconic for the opposite reason. The tricks are much leaner and more direct, but every element is presented for maximum effect well-timed with the music, and executed as big and flashy as possible. It's tremendously difficult to make changes like this as a top player, to stay ahead of the trends and not get left behind as things change, and with such a huge shift in the judging criteria, that may have been more true in 2012 than ever. It's a real testament to Gentry's strength and tenacity as a competitor and performer, even this early in his career. Gentry brought a bunch of new tricks to the table, including some really big bangers, and this routine is a perfect example of how to give both the judges and the crowd exactly what they want. On a more personal level, this routine made a big impression on me just in terms of how well put together the mega mix of songs is, and how much Gentry's stage presence adds to his trick set. There's a lot of artistry involved on multiple levels of this routine, and I know a lot of us took notes back in 2012. And yes, this is the same routine he'd done at Pacific Northwest Regionals a week prior, but I think the Cal States version has just a little bit more sauce on it. I told you, California States is a big deal! Number 3! Worlds 2015 Even just from the opening hits of this routine, calmly stepping forward to the Jaws theme, you can tell what kind of attention went into theming, pacing, and construction. Walking onto the stage as the defending champion in 2015, Gentry had a full year to prepare for this one, and really came back with a treatise on what a yo-yo routine can be. There's an incredible amount of moment-to-moment -moment choreography. The song is basically cue after cue after cue, and almost all of them are taken full advantage of. And the tricks themselves are presented super cleanly through great execution and clever theming in their design. But I think the routine is even more successful on a higher level. 
Gentry built the entire performance around the theme of a shark attack, matching the mood set by the music and contouring his stage manner and actual yo-yo tricks to become more frenzied and dynamic as the freestyle progresses. I know that I hadn't ever thought of yo-yoing in terms like that prior to this freestyle, and I don't think that many had, but the judging system has since been altered to include an evaluation of construction, rewarding exactly the things Gentry was breaking ground on here and I'm not sure that change would have been made if not for this performance. Beyond historical significance, this one is a joy to watch with just how meticulously it's arranged and executed. The base jump and stop and go combos are absolute classic bangers on brilliant display, and generally the pacing and mood of this freestyle are close to unmatched. While the modifications made for Nationals 2015 may have been more successful, this version of the Jaws freestyle will always be a personal favorite for me. Number 2. Worlds 2014. There are very few routines that shook me to my core and made me completely reconsider my approach to yo-yo. Gentry's 2014 Worlds win is one of them, and I think it had the same effect on the scene as a whole, too. I know that, at least for me, every routine I did in the years following drew on this as a basis. While 2015 refined, iterated, and expanded on a lot of the same ideas at work here, the razor sharp routine feels like Gentry's perfect vision, the genuine artifact. Every trick here is themed so strongly. You can usually describe a combo with only one or two words, and it's obvious which one you're referring to. The slack combo, the hand crossing combo, the arm hops, etc. This performance broke down the door on how to assemble and present a diverse trick set, which was not at the forefront of the yo-yo zeitgeist on August 9th, 2014. Though I would say that changed on the 10th. The fact that every discrete trick is so well-focused really emphasizes just how much ideological ground is covered in this performance, and it's covered beautifully. These tricks are composed to be super visually pleasing, but on top of that, the way they're executed is gorgeous. This freestyle is just as well-themed on the macro level, too. The tricks are more than the sum of their parts because of the way they're arranged. Few frontstyle combos have ever been so triumphant, the black hops combo comes at the perfect moment to set the crowd on fire, and the horizontal hops at the end cap things off perfectly to keep the audience screaming. Everything about this routine feeds into the feeling of metallic, shiny, and sharp, in a way that I'm not sure I can communicate. The best art exists to express things that words alone can't. Gentry spent months building hype for this after winning nationals in 2013, even taking a full month to train and learn from the best in Japan. To take the stage with so much pressure and expectation built up, and still impress everyone with a performance that's not only competitive but inspiring, is nothing short of magical. This freestyle is so aesthetically cohesive and polished, and the result of so many smart choices, that its luster will never dull with age. Everything is in its right place, and this routine will always maintain its merit because of that, no matter how the metagame changes. Before I unveil number one, here are a few honorable mentions. Worlds 2012. This one sticks in my mind for a lot of the same reasons that Cal State's 2012 does. It's another Mega Mix freestyle with a generally cool vibe, and this one is sort of a greatest hits routine with musical references to past Nationals and Cal State's routines, among others. The way Gentry built hype and themed this routine around it is masterful on a broad level, but honestly, more than anything, the reason this one is here is for one of the coolest bangers I can think of to this day. California State's 2013. So, as was the norm back then, this contest took place about a week after Pacific Northwest Regionals. Breaking from the norm, though, Gentry actually did different freestyles at both events. His PNWR performance was much more reserved, which made this freestyle extra explosive and triumphant when he finally showed it off. I don't think it's quite as iconic as 2012, which is why this just barely misses the list, but boy did Gentry go in for this one. Worlds 2019. It's a real testament to the strength of your career if you've done five other routines that can edge out a performance that made you the current world champion. What I love about this freestyle is how authentic it feels. After basically redoing his entire trick set in 2018, Gentry actually threw out a whole other routine he'd made for the 2019 season before putting this one together, so that it was more in line with what he wanted to do. 
and the result looks so comfortable and enthusiastic that you can almost miss how high level and smart the performance is competitively. Number 1 So what could possibly outdo the two world champion routines? What could possibly rank above the perfection of Gentry's prog freestyle? Well, for this one, I happened to be sitting in the crowd watching live, and as soon as Gentry stepped off the stage, I vividly remember turning to my boy Don Hodgkinson and saying, well, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And you know, I think that's something I can stand by four years later. There's one more routine that I would say exemplifies Gentry's philosophy on yo-yoing, performing, and artistry above all the others, and that is... Worlds 2016. And also Nationals 2016. They're the same routine, so, you know. Usually, a competitor makes it clear that they're here to play by standing front and center on the stage, ready to show what they've got. But even before the music starts, Gentry is taking this one a level further. By starting in the back corner, he's telling us that he's breaking the mold with his freestyle, and he's thought out everything. And he delivers on both of those promises. It's difficult to draw lines between the trick set, choreography, and presentation in this freestyle. This is one of the only routines ever where they converge so perfectly. Everything is so intertwined that it feels like different music would turn the same elements into a different trick, or a slightly different execution would require a new soundtrack. There are some parts that really drive this home, like the robot section, but it's true of every little bit in this routine. This might be the highest level of choreography ever realized in a yo-yo contest, and beyond the amount of time Gentry spent constructing and practicing it, that's because every little thing you see in this performance works together so synergistically. Gentry positions himself in particular spots on stage, orients himself toward and away from the audience in atypical ways, and gives certain moves a little flair in ways like performing them at weird angles. Each instance of something like this would be insignificant on its own, but the obvious level of care and clear intent behind all of it really helps elevate this routine to be one of the all-time greats. And it's this attention to detail that, to me, makes it the ultimate, defining Gentry Stein freestyle, the single one that best crystallizes who he is and what he represents as a player. He's all about delivering the complete package, accounting for and planning out every aspect of a performance, and making sure that he leaves it all on the court come contest day. His 2016 final embodies all of that. And now, on a more personal and less ideological level, I just want to say that the third act of this freestyle is some of the coolest yo-yoing ever done on stage, regardless of anything else. Just give it a watch if it's been a while. And there you have it! The objective, inarguable, top 5 Gentry Stein freestyles. I mean, um, subjective, in my opinion. Anyway, what do you think? What did I get right? What did I forget? Who else do you want to see a video on? Let me know in a comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there. As always, thank you so much for pointing your face at this, and I'll see you in the next one. But for now, I've got to fly. Thank you to Yo-Yo Factory, Yo-Yo Video Archive, C3 Yo-Yo Design, and Yo-Yo Contest Central for all the clips used in this video. It really makes my day to see people reacting positively to my content, so I just want to say thanks again, and uh, thanks for sitting through the credits. So, see you next time.